As you've heard, Unity has been spending a lot of time working on the Muse product suite, which are AI tools for developers. And if we scroll down on their page here, we've got texture, sprite, chat, animate, and behavior. We're gonna be specifically looking at animate today, which claims we can bring humanoid characters to life with a few lines of text. That's an important note because what I was hoping to get out of this was to be able to upload my llama and get some awesome animations just created by the AI, but humanoid is cool too. Now this is pre-release, so that means that you have to sign up for it and be invited. Luckily I was, so I got an early look at how is this working. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by giving you a sneak peek at new tools that Unity is developing. All right, so before we actually start looking at the tool, I want to give you my high level thoughts and opinions about Muse Animate. So my initial impression is a little bit mixed. I'm not overwhelmingly happy or mad about the results. I think it's a really awesome tool because personally I can't animate very effectively. It takes an incredible amount of time and I don't get very good results because that's just not something I spend a lot of time on. So it's a really awesome tool to be able to come into and generate animations like I need a new walking animation, I need a limping animation, you know, whatever. And I don't have to spend money on a pack to get one specific animation. It has the ability to modify the generated animation too, so you can really customize it pretty easily and remove any weird like jitteriness that comes out of the AI generation. It also gives you a little bit more unique animation because you can tweak it very easily right there in the tool. Why am I sad about it? Well, you're gonna see in a second that a lot of the prompts that I tried to give did not result in very good outputs. And it was relatively limited on what I could get out of it. I will say that this is version 0.2.5. So that's minor version two, build five. So this is still quite early in the development process and I am very sure that it's going to be continually improving. All right, let's hop in and check out how does a tool work? What can you do? And walk through some prompts. So it's pretty interesting that this is a web app. I think that's nice probably for the security and throttling limits because generative AI is kind of expensive. Whenever you come in, you're prompted with the tutorial. I already closed that where it tells you about some of the things that we're gonna walk through anyway. So it's not a big deal that you didn't see that. Maybe I need to make this bigger. There we go. Over here on the left side, you provide your prompt. You can list one to four takes. So it'll generate one to four different attempts at whatever prompts you give. So let's just say maybe we want to walk forward. We generate four of those. It comes up with four. And let's click on the first one that's done. Cool. So this guy is walking forward. Looks like nice little walk animation. Each of these is gonna be slightly different as with most generative AI solutions. And you can just see, okay, cool. I have four pretty standard walking ones with maybe slightly different swaggers of the guy walking. The general guidance from Unity on these is to use relatively simple prompts. If you wanna do something really specific, like, I don't know, you want to perform a muscle up on rings that are two, me two meters off the ground without any skipping motion. This is not going to give us a good result. It's not going to know what all this is and you're trying to be overly specific. So let's look at this. This guy's gonna, it looks like he tried to do a vault. So that's obviously not a muscle up. This guy's jump roping. Okay. This guy's doing a vault. This guy's probably also doing a vault. So that's nowhere near what I asked for, right? If we do more simple prompts, like maybe limping zombie walk, we'll just wait for it to generate. Okay, so that's not great. He's going off to the side, but it looks kind of like a zombie. Let's try this one. Also going off to the side. Here we go. We've got a nice limping zombie walk. Perfect. I didn't really talk about the camera movement, but this works very similar to the Unity editor. You can right click to move around, WASD, and you have Q and E to go up and down. There's a lot of stuff that works pretty well. 
Most locomotion things are covered here. A lot of it's limited based on the data set available. It doesn't have like every possible thing. Like it didn't know what a muscle up was. But if we have something like crawling on the ground, Okay, he's crawling on the ground. That's probably not crawling on the ground. And these ones didn't turn out very well because he, it's not looping. Let's try again with just crawl on the ground, see if we can get a little bit better results. Okay, so this guy looks like he's just Oh, there he goes. He moved a little. There we go. Okay. So this, I think, is a good time to bring in that you can modify the animations. So you see up here at the top left, make editable. Let's just convert that. We'll just click done. One of the really cool things about this AI tool is we can modify these with what you see. These orange dots are called effectors. So we can change the effector where the head is going to look at a different location. You can see where his head's turning all over the place. So we want him to look straight ahead the whole time. We just move that over there. At this first part, he didn't move basically this whole time. So we can probably trim that out. In this segment, he's also not moving. So we'll probably trim that out altogether as well. And over here is where he actually starts moving. So if we actually just care about starting on this keyframe, you can start playing with the animation And it looks kind of like they're using animation rigging package under the hood here, where we're basically modifying the IK constraints. You can manipulate the chest position. So if you want to like be looking up or down the hips as well, which yeah, you can do some weird stuff here. Okay. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go ahead and move on. So, so far we've been getting relatively good results, right? We have some crawling animations, walking, even things like. look around, probably end up working pretty well. Okay, now let's get into some of the things that are a little bit less nice. Maybe I want to jump in place. Well, that's a running animation, not jumping in place. Well, Chris, maybe the AI just had a mess up. Let's try four of them. Okay, that's vaulting. That's also vaulting. That's also vaulting. And that's also vault. Okay, so I have four vaulting animations for jump in place. Not exactly right. Maybe my prompt is bad. Maybe you should call it standing jump. Well, no. This is like a step forward. None of these are just jumping in place. What about what if I want to do a stomp? Four tries. Well, that's a kick. So fighting animations actually generally come out pretty well. There's a lot of different styles of fighting animations that generate pretty well. But here I want to do a stomp. There is no stomp. RPGs are very common for people to try to make. So maybe I want to have a sword slash, like an overhead sword slash, just right. Four tries. I don't know what that is, but that's not a sword slash. That's like a defensive move back. We are playing with strings and also not a sword slash. Okay. Forget about the overhead, just sword slash and any sword slash. That's all I want. Um, nope. Maybe that's kind of okay. 
I could see that maybe getting us there, but not exactly what I was looking for. So here we're getting a little bit closer. You can see that it seems like the AI was trained on fencing. That's like a sword stab. So we're getting somewhere. So if you need fencing animations, I think these would work maybe okay. But they're not really what I'm thinking of, of like RPG style sword slashing. What if we want to pick up a ball? That throws a ball. This looks a lot like the Mixamo animation actually. So in my experience, if we're dealing with a prop of any kind, it struggles a little bit with the exception of, I did find that guns worked relatively well. So if we have like, aim a pistol, that works pretty, that's, that's an aim pistol animation. With varying degrees of movement, aim rifle, Yeah, okay, it's kind of jittery, but you can clean that up. About reload rifle. The uh, hands are a little bit goofy. But some of these are kind of close. If you just adjusted the position of the hands to start where your other one, where the rifle aim animation was, I think you'd be okay. It's got kind of the base movement roughly in the area we want. That's a little bit less good still. And things like get hit, which I would expect with the fighting animations worked pretty well. does not seem to work very well. If we provide a little bit more detail, like maybe you get hit by a sword. Um, yeah, okay, I did a little bit better. If you tell it what you're getting hit by, it looks like it gives a little bit better. So as you can see, there are some animations that turn out relatively good. You can do some small tweaks to make it more your own. And there are a lot that either don't work at all or require a lot of tweaking to get to look right. Unity is investing heavily in Muse as a whole, not just animate, but textures, sprites, chat, and behavior as well. So I'm very confident this is going to get better over time. In its current state, again, I'm looking at version 0.2.5. I think that version accurately represents the current state of Muse Animate. You can get some things that work pretty well and a lot of things that don't. The cool thing is the web app that we do this in is pretty good and we can change a lot of stuff in the app and then just export to get the file at the end. You can get them in FBX format, so pretty standard. I think these are some really interesting products Unity's offering now. I think they're going to help a lot of indie devs accelerate the process of doing their game development without having to use the exact same textures, animations, whatever, as everybody else is using. I've got a link in the description to the Muse signup page where you can go and register there and even start using it today. Now, what about the pricing? You need having the entire Muse suite being bundled together at $30 a month. If you're buying it just for one of the products that may be a little bit expensive, but if you're using texture, animate, sprite, behavior, all of these together, I think that's a pretty good deal. As far as I can tell, at least there's no limits on how many things you can generate, how many attempts you can do, and it's pretty fast. And since generative AI is pretty expensive to have all your servers to be able to do these things, you have to train all the models, all that kind of stuff. I think that's a pretty fair price for what you're getting. It's also, I guess, important to say that this is $30 per seat. So if you have a large team, this can get relatively expensive if they all need to be able to use the Muse suite. It is a month to month subscription, so you can use it for a month cancel, and there's also a 15 day free trial. Now, since some of these are in the pre-release phase and you have some limitations there, it's ultimately going to be up to you on whether that's worth it or not. These are all my initial thoughts, and I'd really appreciate you letting me know what you think about the pricing of Muse down in the comments below.
I know this video was a little bit different format. I tried out some new stuff. So let me know in the comments what you think about Muse Animate and what you think about this style of video. If you got value out of this video, you can make sure that you've liked and subscribed. You can use the affiliate links down in the description for things like the Asset Store and Humble Bundle. You can get yourself some Llama Academy merch at the merch store on YouTube, or you can become a YouTube member or Patreon supporter. If you do those last two, you'll get access to a private Discord server where we can hang out, share your projects, and ask me any questions. You'll also get your name up here at the screen at the end of every video. Starting at the awesome tier, you'll also get a shout out like these awesome folks, Ivan, Ifiabolus, Perry, Mustafa, and Jerematic. There's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.